because it's been an absolutely phenomenal experience, not only for myself, but for the guys going to the Hall of Fame. Just, just overwhelmed with the process and, and the events that have been unfolded by the Edmonton Eskimo franchise. Shovel pass incomplete. Let's go down to Ryan Rashog on the sideline once again. Guys, things are getting extremely heated on this Eskimo sideline. The frustration is boiling over after that last interception. Crompton was having a chat with head coach Gavis Reed a few feet away at Darius Bowman, absolutely screaming at the top of his lungs at Crompton to throw the under route. It was so heated that Mike Riley came over put his arm around Bowman and walked him away. So the frustration clearly boiling over in a 32 to three football game. Yes, and a team that's three and 10 and on its last gasps of air on the season. Nice wander going for the end zone. In trouble though, Arlan Bruce, did he catch that? Yes, he did, what a catch, touchdown. Oh my goodness. Talk about his strong arms and how he reminds me so much of Hall of Famer Earl Winfield. And he proves it right here. As a quarterback, that's all you can ask for is I give you a chance to go up there and bring it down. And if you don't, nobody else is. All that Bruce made sure that was the case. Go get it at its highest point. Give your receiver a chance. That's what Nice Winder does. Throws his fourth touchdown pass against a very solid corner, Eric Samuels. And go get it, Heist. Watch him strong hand this. Now they're fighting it for it right here, and he's not going to be denied. You know, it's crazy. He had the ball at first, then he kind of lost the ball on the way down, oh, then he man. had it again, and that is why Arlan Bruce, his name, when the hall comes around, <laughs> will be mentioned. Yeah, he's, he's, he's phenomenal talent, and uh, reminds me of Winfield. You know, Winfield's last year in the CFL, his 11th season, he led the league in reception yardage. True testament. This guy right there continues to perform no matter what uniform he's wearing. Phenomenal catch, showing you his strong arm, his athletic, strong hands, and athletic ability. Even his teammates, Eric Delorier, give us love. Well, if there is a, there of course is a review. That's that ball, down. well, yeah, That's it's, down. yeah, it looks like it. Samuels can't believe it. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Nor can anybody I'm else. I'm six foot two. You're five foot eleven, maybe. Yeah. And you go up and bring this down after I got my mitt right there. The only, maybe the only question might be right there where we can't see it. Did the ball actually come down and hit the turf? But for from our vantage point, here's here's maybe a good look to I see if it. Don't see it here either. Let's see. There it comes around. No, we're not going to see that see there. It. They may not have anything conclusive. <laughs> we I are not worthy. Here it is again. Maybe this is the best view. He goes in skies for it, getting the highest point. Now right there is the point of contact. I see it underneath his arm. I don't think I it ever touches the I ground. Think he's got it. I think it's a touchdown. And he asked earlier, you know, if Jake's here, who's in the video review booth? I think it's Alma Coleman. Long time official. Well respected, certainly. After review, you're moving on the field stands. It is a touchdown. Yeah. Arlan Bruce, see on place of the week, man. Yeah, absolutely. Sky going to get it. Fundamentally sound, certainly strong, productive. Arlan Bruce. He is a guy who I think a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions through the yeah. years. He brought some of them on himself. When he went, yeah, well, the, the, the touchdown celebrations with the masks yeah. and that. But he, he is a bit of an entertainer. But also, wrong with that. one of the things that Jim Pop and the rest of the Alouettes will tell you is that no one works harder in practice or comes more professionally to practice than this guy. You know what? Practice makes perfect. What a catch. Trophy winner. Congratulates the All Star Arlan Bruce. Two scores today, 92 on his career. I'm glad you said that's in the huddle, too. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Obviously, he and Josh Nicewander are on the same page right now. Yeah, you think? And this has become a beatdown. Jamal Miles stretching it outside, and there is an illegal block. This is going to come back. Flags everywhere. Jamal Miles, another good return, but that's the kind of day it's been for the Eskimos. Chief Cox. 
Well, you saw Arlan Bruce, and we saw so many great Arlan Bruce like catches from this man who is with Ryan Rashad. Thank you very much, Rod, alongside uh, Earl Winfield, inducted into the Hall of Fame this week. 1993. You return two hunts for touchdowns here in Edmonton. How often do you get asked about that? Uh, quite often, you know, highlights of the career. It was a great time. I always like coming to Edmonton and play. The stadium is awesome. I hadn't been back in quite a while, and just looking around at it, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Uh, I always love playing here. Is there a highlight of this week for you? Uh, just being inducted into the Hall of Fame and, and going down as uh, one of the all-time Canadian football players. Uh, great. Uh, it, I'm very humbled about it, and it, it's really been a great time for me and my family. Earl, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Congratulations, and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Guys? Earl the Pearl. For those of us who are around watching him, he was absolutely amazing. Just watch this pack here that we're showing. He just... Oftentimes, he was a man amongst boys, just slapping people out of the way, running through arm tackles. Powerful receiver, explosive in their return game, and certainly receiver. 87 total touchdown passes or, or touchdowns over the course of his 11 year career. My highlight of the week with Earl was shutting down the hospitality suite a couple of nights ago about 4 o'clock in the morning. You're, you're kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. You surprised me. Oh, come on, Rod. You would have been right there. Only with us. four? Yeah. I would have been, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? What great stories you must have had. Man, and and isn't it appropriate that on a day they salute a guy who wore number one, that the guy who wears number one, who has 92 career touchdowns now? Has had a big game, and that's Arlan Bruce. Yeah, I, I, I think they're one and the same, just a couple of decades apart, a decade and a half apart. Just phenomenal receivers, very powerful, strong, strong in the football, quick, elusive, break tackles, determination. True essence of professionals, both of these receivers. Grant Shaw, as the flame flickers here on the Eskimos, hopes for a postseason berth. 39 to 3 the score. Again later today is Calgary Winnipeg. Don't forget TSN is also the home of NFL Sunday Night Football. You know Houston that Texans. Was, that was Warren Moon. San Francisco taking on Colin Kaepernick and the 49ers. Warren Moon. They had a pretty good career Another here. number one. Yeah, he had a pretty good career yeah, down good. there. Yes, he did. That guy lit it up wherever he was at. All-time leading pro. I charted Passer. 501 of his passes in 1983. I cheered him on like a cheerleader, like these girls here out here. I had pom poms going for Warren. He was so good. Troy Smith into the game now, getting some reps. You know, Warren Moon, uh, not only a great quarterback, but as Josh Nicewander puts a, a bow on this day, this is a day he's going to remember for quite some time. I think this is a day where he said, you know what? I got this. The last three weeks have indicated that coming to this ball game, he was at he threw 65 percent completion percentage. He had no no interceptions over the course of two weeks. He's upped his quarterback rating well over 100 now. He adds four more touchdown passes to it. Very composed, relaxed, and comfortable in this offense now. And an offense I can tell you they changed over the last couple of weeks. There goes Arlan Bruce again. You know, he did throw up the one interception. The funny thing that, you know, when a day goes right for you is Chris Thompson gets the pick, but then they fumbled the football, and it was kind of one of those turning points as well because the, uh, the Alouettes continued to march from there. And we get to see a lot of Troy Smith now in the final moments of this one. And it was, go back to the first drive of the Edmonton Eskimos, they're driving the football down the field, then they have an illegal substitution, puts them back in first and 20, throw an incomplete pass, and then they throw it underneath, and then they miss a field goal, and it kind of goes wrong from there. Second short yard, but you know you're, you're so right, Matty. You've been in so many games where, you know, people can always say it's not the start, it's how you finish. That's but, true. But, you know, look at the starts and how it's affected both of these teams this season, and Edmonton gets off to a lousy start. Montreal finally gets off to a good start, and it's propelled them. They've never looked back since that 14 0 lead. Oftentimes, this game lends itself to tremendous finishes because of the three minute clock and how it's handled. But you play 60 minutes, and there's and the coaches will go back and look at the video. And I guarantee you, those two guys right there will, will go back and analyze it. Kerry Joseph will look at it, and they'll correct it for 60 minutes. And that first drive shot the Eskimos in the foot, and it's carried over into everything they've done today. 
Troy Smith is rolled over by T.J. Hill, who comes up swinging wildly. Troy Smith threw the football, and then Hill rolled over on him, and either something was said or something happened as Hill was on top of Smith. Yeah, exactly. I think Troy took exception to how he was handled, and then he kind of got up a little aggressively on T.J. Hill, and T.J. doesn't like it. But as a linebacker, he's a little undersized against that quarterback, Troy Smith. T.J. Hill, who used to wear Montreal Alouette colors, of course. You said it earlier, we have not mentioned his name or J.C. Sherritt's or Damaso Munoz quite enough. His frustration's coming out right now. And he should be frustrated because defensively, they've been getting it handed to him all afternoon. Marlon Bruce and Deron Carter are the wideouts this time. Second and ten. Troy Smith sending them out again. Come the Eskimos, there goes the football. Smith, the bullet, and into coverage. Was again looking for Eric Delorier, unable to come up with it. And well covered, well covered by Marcel Young. And I think, uh, excuse me, it might have been Chris Thompson. Right here, just the seam, uh, running the seam, running go around, getting outside. Watch how he kind of plays, plays and plays and undercuts that Eric Delorier does. That's Chris Thompson getting his left hand back on it because Gloria is trying to come back underneath. Well played, Chris Thompson. Sean White will look to pin the Eskimos again. Clock ticks under 11 minutes to go here. It has been a thorough demolition by the Alouettes. And this is into the end zone for another single point. And they put up 40 now. Just a reminder, we've got game two of our Saturday doubleheader coming up. There is Kevin Glenn, the quarterback of the Calgary Stampeders, going for their 11th win of the season. They're taking on Winnipeg when we're done in Edmonton. Well, the Edmonton Eskimos season almost done here. Hoping for a crossover. Needed a big win here against the Alouettes. The way to cross over is the... Eskimos did last year for the first time is fourth place team in the West has to have a better record than the third place team in the East it has to be a better record you cannot tie them you have to have more points procedure Edmonton number 68 this was a critical Five one today penalty remains first down yes Edmonton will move to three and twelve Montreal moving to six and eight staying in contact with Hamilton and Toronto Oh, look at this, Rod. Yeah, halftime last week when they were sailing against the Argos and had a 21-point lead. And have been unraveling since. Crompton again. Shamad Chambers. And there are, you know, there are a lot of bright lights here. And somewhere down the road, Eskimo fans and Ed Hervey and the rest and this organization, they look at this time as, as growing pains and going through it and and you got young stars like Shamad Chambers, yeah. but at the same time, here was a day today, it's still a chance as you're still building that you may have come up with what would have been a much better effort than they've shown. Yeah, a lot of the pieces are in place. I credit Ed Hervey for doing that. You know, I just, you know, you look at Marcus Henry, Shamad Chambers, you got Freddie Stamps, you got Adarius Bowman, Nate Cohorn. They just, I, that's a, that's a, formidable receiving court that any quarterback would like a chance to throw to and they're just not able to get it done because they can't get out of the way of themselves putting themselves in tough spots offensively maybe the most telling stat of all Matt is the stat that really shows your inexperience is that close game stat where the Eskimos are one in ten now this is not a close game clearly but when you are unable to win close games that often points to inexperience yeah it's just Four points and less since 2012, going one and ten in those games. Got to learn how to win those. When you can't win those runs you're in. How can you win these ones? That was a nice timing throw by 
Shouldn't be on quarterback, showing you a strong arm. Spotting it in there to Fred Stamps. Stamps, who's having a career year as far as yardage goes. Continues to uh, find a way to get it done, no matter who's quarterback. Kind of reminds me of a couple guys that back in the studio. Milt Spiegel and Jack Klein. <laughs> Calvin McCarty gets a touch here. After this, the Alouettes, they're in a fight as well to try to host a playoff game, which they usually do, and it's been quite some time since they did not host a playoff game. In fact, 2007. They have put themselves right back in, and Shema Chambers into the end zone for a touchdown, but a penalty flag back at the 20-yard line. Don't celebrate yet, young man. Oh, beautiful play. Tremendous throw. Knifed in there with timing. Touchdown, Edmonton Eskimo. Shema Chambers showing his strength and his explosiveness. Pass interference. Montreal, number 12. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. Okay, now you can celebrate. Yeah. Shimon Chambers. Well, you know, you got to start somewhere. At a nine-minute mark of the fourth quarter, the Eskimos are get their get first that, major. Shimon Chambers, that youth you're talking about, Rod, flexing his muscles, showing his strength and ability, finds the end zone. Shimon. First major score, but way too late here. And Long, long hill to climb. Jonathan Crompton with a touchdown toss. He's had a little bit of that in that first half. This could be an entirely different game right now, but they were blanked <laughs> from the end zone. 40 to 10, Montreal. I believe that Montreal did what they had to do, come in here and put it on them early, keeping themselves in contention for the Eastern Division race. They're still, still a factor there, big time. Ball bounces out of bounds. Where are the standings Illegal as they off. are? 847 to go. We will not give the Alouettes the win yet, but at five and eight they go oh, to I will. six. I will. I'll, okay, give go. I'll give it to them right there. All right, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, Six and eight. They stay within striking distance of Hamilton, who's at seven and seven, and the next four weeks are against Winnipeg, Hamilton, Hamilton, Toronto. All Eastern Division opponents, all four-point games. This whole division can change over the next four weeks. When I sat down with Jim,